If I launch a projectile in the air, there are a few things I might like to know about where that projectile is going, how far it goes before it comes back to the ground, how high it goes, how much time it spends in the air. And those are all things that we can answer with the two kinematic equations of motion, the definition of acceleration and the displacement equation. Let's begin with how far the projectile goes. I would describe the trajectory right here. It's launched with a speed, we'll call it V sub zero, V initial. Initial speed, it goes a height to Y max, is how high it goes, Y sub max. And then it comes back down and hits the ground. On a level playing field, it'll hit the ground at the same height it leaves, and then we'll just consider that today. X final is how far it goes. And that's really something we would like to know. You want to hit the target. So here we go with the football. You have a catcher on the other end. Catcher's at a very specific location. Football's got to make it right to that catcher. And it has this initial vertical velocity and horizontal velocities. They're each given. So the quarterback throws the football. It has 18 meters per second speed horizontally and 15 meters per second speed vertically. So it's maybe not drawn exactly right because it's going faster in the horizontal direction than the vertical direction, but that's how I have it drawn. And X final is where the person who's going to catch it better be. So let's find out how far this football will go with these throw conditions. As the football flies through the air, it follows this parabolic trajectory. So when it gets to a point farther away from where it was thrown, it's going slower in the vertical direction than when it was thrown. And when it gets up to the top, it has absolutely no vertical speed. But what I should point out is that the horizontal speed is that same 18 meters per second the whole time even when it gets back to the ground. And when it is back to the same height where it's thrown, the vertical speed is the same as the launch speed, but opposite, minus 15 meters per second in the vertical direction. The horizontal speed is still 18 meters per second, the same as it has been throughout the entire trajectory. Before we can answer how far it goes, we have to first know how long this football is in the air for how much time exactly. So let's go back to the picture and let me ask you, if I want to know how much time the football spends going up and coming back down, is that a vertical question or a horizontal question? Because all projectile motion problems, which are clearly two-dimensional problems, are a combination of a horizontal problem and a vertical problem. The vertical problem includes acceleration due to gravity. The horizontal problem is at constant speed. So do you answer the question of how far it was in the air with the vertical or a horizontal problem? Well, let's look at the knowns and unknowns. And you know the initial speed in the vertical direction. You know the initial speed in the horizontal direction. You know the acceleration in the vertical direction. You know the final speed in the vertical direction. It's the opposite of the initial speed. So it started out at plus 15, it ended up at minus 15. And the unknown is time. Now how would you use the horizontal problem to figure out the time spent in the air? You just know how long it's going in this direction. But since you don't know where it will hit the ground, as far as the horizontal people know, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. It takes the vertical situation to have the knowledge of when that football collides again with the ground. So let's use our initial y velocity and the final y velocity. Which equation would that go into? If you want to know the time spent going from the initial velocity to the final velocity with a given acceleration of minus 10 meters per second squared, which equation? So look at your two equations, definition of acceleration and the displacement equation. This question has nothing to do with displacement. It has everything to do with time and velocity. So I think the definition of acceleration, right? Because you know the initial velocity, plus 15. You know the final velocity, minus 15. You know the acceleration, minus 10. You can put those numbers in and find the time. So hopefully you can organize this statement such that you can solve for t. 
We have minus 30 equals minus 10 times t. Just bring the 15 over from the right side to the left side. Three seconds later, that football comes crashing back down to the ground. That wasn't the question. The question was, how far does it go? But the problem was, we couldn't answer how far it goes because the horizontal world has no knowledge about when that football has to return to the ground. So as far as the horizontal world is aware, it's going to keep going. It's going to keep going until the vertical world says, you got to stop. So now we know that after three seconds, it's got, it has to stop. So let's answer the question, how far does it go now? Given that it's going to be back at the ground in three seconds, you have an initial x velocity of 18 meters per second. Well, it's always 18 meters per second in the x direction. So we just have to multiply that 18 by 3 seconds, 18 meters per second times 3 seconds gives you 54 meters. We know that the football will go 54 meters before it crashes back into the ground. Do you see how we had to do two problems? First, we needed to ask the vertical world, how much time does this football spend in the air? And then we used that answer to inform the horizontal world so that they could calculate how far it goes. I have another question for you. After two seconds of throwing it, since it's in the air for three seconds, after two seconds, how high is it? That's an odd time. The answer is not at the top. If you guess that at 1.5 seconds, it's at its apex, you're guessing correctly because the projectile's trajectory is symmetric. Now, we want to know after two seconds how high it is, what are the knowns and what are the unknowns? Is this a horizontal or a vertical question? I think we're asking the vertical world how high it goes, right? Because the horizontal world has no idea that it's doing anything vertically. So it's definitely a vertical question, which means we have access to the acceleration equal to minus 10 meters per second squared. The correct initial velocity is 15 meters per second, and the time is two seconds. We also know the initial height was zero, y sub zero, so let me just make that a point because our unknown is how high it is, so our unknown is y. So we're going to calculate y compared to an initial height of zero. Which equation gives that to us? So look at the kinematic equations and ask yourself. You have v zero, you have acceleration, you have time. So from the two equations, the first one there is the definition of acceleration. The second one is the displacement equation. Which one gives us y? This y is y at the end of the two seconds. So you could think of it as a y final. Whenever you're talking about displacement, you better be thinking about the displacement equation. That's why it's called the displacement equation. So we're going to choose that. We're going to choose the displacement equation, and you can just put in the numbers. y sub 0 is 0. Initial velocity in the y direction is 15, and t is 2 seconds. Plus 1 half acceleration is minus 10, and time is 2 seconds. And don't forget to square it, a common mistake. And you get 10 meters. Uh, by the way, in case all of the units here are puzzling, let's just write this without the units. You have 15 times 2 plus... 0 0.5 times minus 10, minus 10, times 2 squared, which is 4. So you get 10 meters. This is not the maximum height. This is just the height at 2 seconds. You need to use this to do the projectile motion formative exercise. Okay, so now we've answered the question of how far a projectile goes, how much time it spends in the air. You could proceed to answer a few other questions, like how high it goes, I'll stop with that right now and just remind you, this is your go-to example when you're doing the formative assessment for projectile motion.